In this episode we are going to cross from Barbados to Martinique after a nice relaxation on Barbados. Tomorrow morning we will cross to Martinique, which should be a day sail. It's getting light, 5.30 or something like that. And then Port St. Charles, northwest of Barbados, ready to cross to Martinique. Stay high and dry over here. Well, it's not that much, otherwise I would... Uh, oh, I can do that. We will have the wind on the beam, 20-25 knots, with a lot of squalls. So what we did is we started with two reefs in the main, and then we used the code zero in and out when the wind dropped a bit. I even felt a little seasick. The waves from the side, that's a bit different than uh, during the crossing when it's coming straight from the back. Just uh, got the second reef out, one reef in the main now and the go zero. It is a little bit on the edge of what we should do with go zero. And over the first three hours, almost nine knots on average, but uh, should go a little bit faster now. point three on average. Then we went pretty fast uh, over the last hour because the first three hours it was eight point eight.
and time. Because here is the wind. Looks like we're going right in between. Big squall uh, just north of us, and the other one uh, passes uh, south of us. We used a jib to roll in the Code Zero and roll it out. Just before the Martinique, we found out that you could even sail them together. We saw a big squall coming, but before that, the wind was a little bit gone, so we said, let's roll out the Code Zero. Nou, we kunnen dus gewoon afvallen als er meer wind komt. But then we decided to leave the jib. That sailed very well actually. And it was good we did that because when the squall came in we had to react quickly and roll the Coutinho back in. There's another squall approaching Martinique. We're not sure whether it's uh, the big skull going over the island or that it's just the acceleration zone around the, around the south point of Martinique. But we had 28 knots of wind all of a sudden and more than 17 knots of speed. Or it's just a boat that wants to go uh, on anchor. I want to see where I drop my anchor. That's what the boat says. Yeah, well, because the main goal for today was to arrive here in broad daylight. 100 miles in broad daylight. That's, That's not, not bad. bad, no. 100 miles under 10 and a half hours. 9.6 on average. Volgens net hadden we er eigenlijk al overheen willen hebben. We tried to do the check-in in Saint Anne the next day after we arrived, but there the uh, office was closed, so we had to go to Le Marin. Kind of busy out here, so we're passing Biofac. It's a long time ago, in the middle of this uh, mooring field. Yeah. So it's uh, over two years ago it's that like we Mark were uh, uh, with uh, Pierre on Biotech, and it's his. <laughs> it's, it's always doing something wrong. <laughs> it's his fault uh, that we bought an Outremer. <laughs>
He knows that. He knows that really well, that he costs us a lot of money. <laughs> So we're going to move the boat into uh, the Bay of Le Marais. We found a little bay on the side where it uh, didn't look too busy. And uh, now we're uh, way out in Le Marais, which is a long distance with the dinghy uh, like we saw yesterday. The Spacaint is joining us as their sons are coming today, later in the afternoon arriving here from Holland. more points out where the anchor chain is and for me that's a sign to turn the boat and to go a little bit backwards now In. okay so we have some signs now because I don't have a chain counter so Mark always gives me a sign when the anchor is loose five meters Drifting considerably, but we're going uh, around that red buoy, red on starboard here. There are snorkelers on the reef there. to be very careful for the reefs in the big bay at Le Marais. And where there are no reefs, there are so many boats anchored or on moorings that we had to slalom in between them. We want to go in that bay, but uh, there's a reef in between. Eerst Piedra Libre. Piedra Libre, 